Rep Wellness Center. We're going to talk about step two in, in learning how to hinge at the hips. Learn how to do a hip hinge. Last time we talked about the foot, how to activate that. And one thing I didn't really hit enough is getting the ball, the big toe down, and that is what we call eversion of the foot. And then some people kind of seesaw with the foot, like, okay, I'm going to get the big ball toe, so we kind of turn everything in. The idea is once you get there and you're creating an arch on the outside, you're trying to push the pinky toe down. So then you're activating both arches at the same time. And that's going to help open up all these tarsal bones. And I know you're thinking, well, how does the hip hinge have to do with the foot? A lot of it's connected. So just working on trying to get everything wide and get the ball of the big toe down and pinky toe down. That's where you feel all your toes separate. You're going to feel a lot of that transfer into the hip. So that's why it's step one. So if you want to review that, go to the first video. We're doing these in steps because there's probably 10 steps in learning how to hip hinge. And it's really important. It's one of the best things in life. And if you really want a great description on why it's so good for you. We're going to link a little video down in there called the Foundation of Health. Your hips are a foundation that create a great support for your spine. So step two is about this hamstring. So the hamstring attaches here, goes to your knee, and usually it's in a short position on most people because we like to sit and it tends to pull our pelvis into this position. I stole your phone up. <laughs> and it pulls us back this way. So it tilts our whole pelvis that way. And that just kind of compresses the whole spine like we talked about last time. So we need to fight against that hamstring. One way to do that is activating the hip flexor. That helps us hip pinch. So we want to keep the knee bent. So keep step one. Every step we add, we're keeping. So we're getting here. The knee is loose. It's kind of bent. So this is what we call the measuring stick hands. So I'm putting my pinky right here. This is our ASIS, anterior iliac spine. So when we push this back, we're going to push our whole pelvis structure that way. And then our thumb is going here on our ribs. So when we're increasing this distance, we're activating those hip flexor muscles. So, and this is where your quad attaches. So it's definitely one of your hip flexors that you want to activate. So the knee stays where it is. I watch my pelvis as I tighten. So I'm sucking in, lengthening, pushing everything with weight back into the heels. And that's when you'll feel the feet really fighting to hold on because they want to go up, so you got to keep them kind of locked down on the ground. That's why it's really important to keep step one going. So that's all for step two. And what you should feel is tension on the hamstring. Step two is tension on the hamstrings. And the reason this is important, so come over here, got some pictures for you. This is our sick iliac joint. A lot of people are spraining all this tissue, and this is actually a lot, this deep, lower sacroiliac joint is a lot like your cranial bones. Shouldn't be a lot of movement, but a lot of us are spraining this tissue because we're always generating motion from the lower spine and the SI joint and not the hip structure itself. Hence the need for hip hinging. And that's just the deeper layer. We have other areas of injury. There's your erector spinae muscles all form one big tendon that goes over that sacrum. So a lot of people say, I have pain here. And that's because this tissue is just always getting strained from bending from this area, not motioning from the hip joint. Let's show you on Phil over here. All soccer joint. Supposed to have a lot of motion. Sacroiliac joint, not supposed to have a lot of motion. Pretty simple, right? So this is all helping you get that hip joint in the socket. First step is using the feet. Second step is getting that hamstring out of that shortened position. Because that, when that hamstring's pulling that pelvis in, that's cheating. The pelvis is doing the movement and not the hip. And that's gonna lead to problems down the line. All right, that's it for step two. Practice those in conjunction with each other. We'll see you for step three next week.